The PPP program is no longer accepting applications, but tonight, another lesser known SBA program is still open with billions to award. In a KPI X5 original report, our Kenny Choi discovers the fraudsters are applying in droves. We've learned cyber criminals are stealing hundreds of millions of taxpayer dollars meant for small businesses. The crime spree is also leaving millions of Americans struggling to deal with identity theft. First of all, it's just a shock. That was Craig Franklin's first reaction when he received a pack of letters in the mail from the unemployment office in Albuquerque, New Mexico. I haven't been to New Mexico since 1963, so I sent back immediately a fax saying, this is fraud, do not process. Then he went to check his credit report and got more disturbing news. I had um, applied for a small business loan for $5,000 to open up my own deli in Texas. I can barely make peanut butter sandwiches, let alone open a deli. He says the Small Business Administration was not surprised to hear from him. For the last two months, she says, we've been just day and night working on fraud cases. Overall, it's just been uh, a huge increase. Shamika Walker is an attorney with the Federal Trade Commission. It can take years to untangle yourself from identity theft. That's not your own doing. You know, you have to go through all of these different steps to try to, you know, recover. Nationwide, the FTC has received close to 224,000 complaints relating to COVID-19 and stimulus fraud, peaking to 1,990 in a single day in May. Those complaints have mentioned words like stimulus, pandemic. That's why we think that this is all related. The fraudsters applying for a loan in Craig's name were trying to steal from an SBA program similar to the Paycheck Protection Program called the Economic Injury Disaster Loan, EIDL, or EIDL for short. It turns out Craig isn't the only victim. Our findings are significant. Hannibal Ware with the SBA's Office of the Inspector General testified this month to a small business subcommittee that the EIDL program currently funded with $374 billion taxpayer dollars is under assault by fraudsters. To get funds to eligible entities quickly, they lowered the guardrails for the EIDL program in specific. And we have found for a fact that those actions increased fraud risk significantly. The inspector general found the SBA repeatedly ignored red flags, such as account holders attempting to transfer funds to foreign accounts, applicants changing bank accounts just before receiving funds, and multiple applicants using the same email address and bank account. Who is minding the store? Congresswoman Judy Chu chaired that Washington hearing. I was really shocked with the inspector general's report because... He said that nearly 440 financial institutions called their office regarding cases of abuse that was very evident to those financial institutions, and yet the SBA had no ability to take that up and do something about it. The SBA turned down our request for an interview, but sent a statement saying evidence of waste, fraud, and abuse with any of SBA's loan programs is not tolerated and should be reported. Back in San Francisco, Craig Franklin guesses they're just overwhelmed. My guess is there are more scammers out there than there are government workers to be able to keep track of them. So it's really a cockroach situation. He still can't get through to New Mexico to stop the fraudulent unemployment claim, but was able to stop the $5,000 SBA loan in his name. Now he's bracing for what could happen next. I mean, I'm getting letters with my Social Security number on, on there, so... So if those letters are going anywhere else, my Social Security number is getting shopped around or uh, exposed and available to, to more scammers. Congresswoman Chu says she plans to call for another hearing soon to hold the SBA's feet to the fire and to make sure the agency is listening to the inspector general's warnings. In San Francisco, Kenny Choi, KPIX 5. Now, despite warnings of major fraud, as of October 1st, the SBA had not initiated any loan reviews. That is according to the Inspector General.